Hi there, I am Roshan and welcome to the programming portal. In this video, you will understand how we can encrypt our data in Python and later we'll try to decrypt the same data. So the very first question comes to mind, what is encryption? When you want to hide your data such that nobody can read your data except you or it can only be read after decryption. For example, many websites store your password in some sort of encrypted format so that nobody can access except you. The process of encryption and decryption is called cryptography. There are many ways you can do the encryption. You can use the PyCrypto module or cryptography module in Python. Or you can write your own logic with random numbers to encrypt and decrypt the data. In this video, we will be using cryptography module. We will be using symmetric encryption here, which means the same key will be used to encrypt and decrypt the data. So let's get started. The first step is to install the cryptography module using pip command. You can open the command prompt if your python path variable is set. Or if you are using any id like pycharm, then you can open the terminal window from the menu. So you can go to view, tool window and click on terminal. Then we can type pip install cryptography. and hit enter. As you can see it is already installed in my system. If it is not installed in your system, you can use pip command to install it. So let me close this window. Next step is to import the Fairnet class from the cryptography module. So we can write from cryptography.fairnet import we need to import Fairnet class. Fairnet is an implementation of symmetric cryptography, which does not allow to read or modify the data without a key. It is symmetric encryption here, which means the same key will be used to encrypt and decrypt the data. So the next step is to generate a key. For that we can call generate key function from the Fairnet class. So we can write Fairnet dot generate key. Generate key function generates a unique key every time. So we need to store this key somewhere. So I can write key equals to fanet dot generate key. If you lose this key, you will not able to decrypt data that was encrypted with this key. If you want, you can store the key in some file or database and load the same key every time wherever needed in your project. Now we have generated the encryption key. We'll use the same key to encrypt and decrypt the message. So let us declare a variable with some string message in it. So I can write message equals to the programming portal or welcome to channel. We need to convert these strings to bytes before encrypting. So I can write dot encode here. Encode method will help us to encode that string. Next step is to encrypt our message. For that we need to create the object of fanet class with the generated key. So I can write f object equals to fanet class and we need to pass key as a parameter. Now we can call the encrypt method. So I can write f object dot encrypt. We need to pass our data as a parameter. So I can write message here. Encrypt method will encrypt the data. We can store our encrypted data in some variable. So I can write encrypted message equals to encrypt method. And we can print the encrypted message. Let me print the key also. So I can write print key. Final step is to decrypt the message. So we can call the decrypt method. So I can write f object dot decrypt and we need to pass message here and we can store decrypted message. And we can print the decrypted message. So I can write print decrypted message. So let me save this. Decrypt method will decrypt the data which was encrypted with the generated key. 
If the key is correct, then it will return us with the original plain text. Otherwise, it will raise an exception. Let me save this and try to run. So we got some error. Let me check. Okay. So we need to pass encrypted message here. Because we already encrypted the message, we need to decrypt that. So let me save this and try to rerun. As you can see, this is the key generated. This is our encrypted message and this is our decrypted message. The message is first encrypted, then it is decrypted with the same key. For the next run, we'll have separate key generated. Also, the key is lost now and we need to regenerate a separate key if you want to perform encryption decryption again. To resolve this, you can store your key in some sort of file or database. Then load the same key for every encryption and decryption. In our future video, we'll see how we can save our key and use the same key to encrypt the files instead of message. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment and hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching. See you next time.